Hi, hello friends. Welcome back to TRP Revision Series. <coughs> so we are discussing about analog electronics. Already we were completed signal and system fully. And of course, even in analog electronics also, we are in the last topic almost. In analog electronics, we were started from bipolar junction transistor MOSFET. We were started from MOSFET. Then we have completed fully all basic configuration in AC and DC. Then we have completed bipolar junction transistor. Then we have also completed feedback amplifier circuits. Then we have also completed operational amplifier. Then we have also completed oscillator circuits. Now, in the last class, I told you there are one more topic to discuss. That is a triple five timer. Some important things that you must know about triple five timer circuit. After completing triple five timer, we will be completing the basics of diodes. That is the final topic of analog electronics. With this, we will be completing the analog electronics classes. Okay, sir. Let's start from the triple five timer. So in the last session, what we saw, we have seen the wave shaping circuits, and we have also seen different types of oscillator circuits. So we were started from RC phase shift oscillator circuits. Then we have discussed about LC circuits. Then we have discussed about crystal oscillators. There also we have seen RC oscillators are usually used to generate sinusoidal waveforms. Then if you are using LC oscillators, then we can generate square waveform. Then if you are using crystal oscillators, then we can generate sawtooth and triangular waveforms. We have seen this. After that, we have also seen two types of frequencies. One is if you are observing RC oscillators alone, this will be works under audio frequency. Whereas if you are observing square under that is LC and crystal oscillators, they will work with the radio frequency. So we have seen the range of frequencies also. And after that, we have started and we have seen the classification of RC oscillators, that is RC phase shift oscillator and wave bridge oscillator. Then we have seen in LC oscillators, we have been discussed about basically three types of oscillators: carpet oscillator, partlet oscillator, clap oscillator. Then we have discussed about crystal oscillator. We have seen the basic operation series and the parallel resonance, and we have seen its formulas, how to calculate everything. Done, no, sir. At last, I told you that. We will be starting triple five timer, and uh, there are no uh, huge thing to learn from triple five timer. But I repeatedly asked the question from triple five timer is calculating the total time period, and you will be requested to calculate the charging time constant, the discharging time constant, and the total time constant. With the help of triple five timer, we will be designing the most important multi vibrators. One is mono stable multi vibrator, and the another one is a stable multi vibrator. If you are observing the circuit of the monostable multi vibrator, let me show you. If you are observing the circuit of monostable multi vibrator, one second, I will show you this. Okay. So let us see the first one. Monostable multi vibrator by using triple five timer circuit. Keep that in. First one is monostable multi vibrator. In monostable multi vibrator, the most repeatedly asked time is total time period T. Basically, the formula is very easy. Simply T is equal to R C into log three. The formula is for monostable multi vibrator. T is equal to R C into log three. Here the value of ln 3 equal to 1.1. So 1.1 times of RC. This is the total time period that we are deriving it from monostable multi vibrator. But the problem is sometimes in the exam what they will give is they will give the diagram. So from the diagram you will have to take. So first what they will give is they will give trigger circuit. I will show you whatever the pins that they are that will be given in the exam. I am talking about only those things. I am not drawing all the figure <coughs> pin diagram here. So a trigger point will be given. Along with that, discharging time period will be defined, and the supply VCC will be given. Resistor RC, capacitor, everything will be defined in the exam. So R will be given here. 
C will be given here. After that, capacitor will be directly connected to your ground. And you know, uh, most of you might be revised to these things. That will be connected to BCC supply. After that, it will also be directly connected to the reset point and the other things are fall in place. Anyway, we will keep our attention only with the required things. Now, this type of diagram will be given for monostable multi vibrator. All you have to do is, uh, do is only keep your attention with the value of capacitor and resistor. Just to take it from there. So, if they are asking triple five time and monostable multi vibrator, then the total time period T is equal to repeat one more time 1.1 times of R into C. R into C equal to directly product of Rc into log 3. That's it. So, this is the formula to obtain the total time period when we are in monostable multi vibrator and it has been designed with the help of triple five timer. Now, let us see the another application that is a stable multi vibrator. If we are discussing about a stable multi vibrator, This is a little bit important. I will show you now. In case of a stable multi vibrator, what they will do is they will ask uh, there are directly three types of questions. One is total time and a charging time constant, discharging time constant. Rarely they will ask duty cycle also. So now we will have to totally learn four formulas. Let us start from the beginning. Once again, consider three resistors. Let me consider resistor one. And uh, resistor 2, along with that, we are also going to consider one capacitor. So, let me extend a little bit. So, this is capacitor. As we show, this capacitor will going to be connected with the ground. After that, you can directly connect it with the ground. Now, let us keep some, assign some name for the resistors. This is RA, and here the resistor RB will be given. Here, capacitor will be given. And the terminal of this resistor junction will be connected with the VCC and the reset point, as we show. It will be connected with the VCC and of course it will also be connected with the reset point. Fine sir, this is fine. Our attention should be with the where you will have to keep your attention with the value of RA, RB, RC in order to explore four uh, things. One is charging time period, discharging time period, total time period, duty cycle. Now I will tell you one by one. Sir, the connection, I, I have not given the full diagram, okay, I am just focusing on, you don't think about the all other things, they will give the complete diagram also, sometimes they will also give the value of resistors directly, if it is given directly, what should I do sir, how should I calculate all the things, the first one is, repeatedly ask the question, charging time constant, the first one is, charging time constant, write down, when they are asking, when you have been requested to calculate the charging time constant, what is the formula, to explore the value of charging time constant, sir. Just to reiterate once, charging time constant formula A is you will have to add these two resistors RA plus RG because the charging in case of a stable multi vibrator capacitor has been charged through resistor RA and RB. So we will have to find the cumulative value that is RA plus RE, uh, RB total resistance into capacitor value into 0 0.693 that is log 2. This into log 2, if you want me to write down, into log 2 or 0 0.693. Okay, so this can also be written as 0 0.693 times of Ra plus Rb into C. So, what we are understanding here is, during charging, from the supply, you can observe, from the supply, capacitor will be charging with the help of Ra plus Rb, through Ra and Rb. Now, during discharging, so next to time period, Repeatedly asked in the exam is find out the discharging time period. Let us see the charge will be discharged. Let us see if you are requested to calculate the discharging time period. What is the formula to calculate the discharging time period, sir? Discharging should happen only through two people. One is R B, other one is capacitor C. So while discharging, same formula, but we are going to use only R B C into ln two. So we have seen ln 2 is nothing but 0 0.693. So 0 0.693 times of resistor RB into C. That's it. So this is the formula to calculate the value of discharging time period. Now tell me how will you calculate the total time period, sir? So the total time period is nothing but the addition of charging time period plus discharging time period. Correct, no, sir? Now we have seen charging time period calculated as 0 0.693 times of RA plus RB into C and we have also seen that 
discharging time period also can be written as 0.693 times of Rb plus uh, sorry Rb into C. Now you can observe see the Rb into C, Rb into C two times. So this can be rewritten as finally you can take 0.693 commonly outside. Inside this bracket, this will become Ra plus twice of Rb into C. That is the formula to obtain the total time period. So now we know the formula to calculate the charging time. We also know the formula to calculate the discharging time. And we must know this. We also know the formula to calculate the total time. I said apart from all this, one more question will be framed from duty cycle. You will be requested to calculate duty cycle of a stable multivibrator when it is designed with the help of triple file timer. So how should we calculate the duty cycle? Sir, what is the standard formula? Duty cycle is nothing but on time period divided by total time period. That is on time period means uh, we can consider it as charging time period. So that is nothing but charging time period. Charging time period divided by total time period. Now what is the charging time period sir? We have seen 0.693 times of resistor Ra plus Rb into C. This is charging time period divided by discharging time period plus charging time period total time that is 0.693 times of Ra plus 2 times of Rb into C. Now if you observe the numerator and the denominator C 0.693 both will get cancelled. Suppose if the duty cycle if you are requested to if you have been requested to define this duty cycle in percentage then the final formula see that Ra plus Rb divided by Ra plus 2 times of Rb into C. So in the exam what they will do is they will only give the value of resistor Ra and Rb. Directly you will be requested to calculate the value of duty cycle. What you will be thinking? You will be thinking that nothing is given, some data is missing in the question. No, only Rb and Ra alone sufficient to explore the duty cycle of a stable multivibrator when it has been designed with the help of triple five timer. So what is the formula sir? Ra plus Rb by Ra plus twice of Rb. That's it. So don't forget whatever the formulas that I had given here. Of course all these formulas are little bit very important in the examination point of view. You will have to go through all of these things. Apart from that, we have completed almost all important topics from analog electronics. Now as I told at last we will discuss about the basics of the diode. We know most of us might aware of uh, basics of the diode but still there are few more things that you have to be carefully observe when we are uh, playing with the diodes because they are uh, very important. If you are observing the basic characteristics diode uh, basically uh, recollect the uh, properties that you have studied about uh, diode. Diode is having two regions. Yes or no sir? Yes. Most of you might aware of it. Let me tell you one by one what are the things uh, are very very important. I will discuss only those things. Now let us discuss about the final topic that is diode. That's it. So the last topic in analog electronics that we are going to discuss now that is diode. As we know diode is basically having a two regions as we are observing. Diode is basically having two regions. And if you are observing its forward and reverse bias characteristics. It will be seems like how it will be sir? <coughs> it is having a certain cutting voltage. Okay, see. Now the thing is, if you are observing the diode forward bias characteristics, yes, it will be like this. And reverse bias characteristics will be like this. After that, still, if you are trying to operate your diode, it will be damaged. So this zone is called damaged zone. You should not operate your diode beyond the breakdown voltage. So the maximum restricted point for the normal PN junction diode is up to breakdown voltage point you can go, you cannot go beyond that. That is reverse bias operating region. Now here this is voltage on the positive side, this is negative voltage and the y axis is representing the current flow, current that is flowing through the diode. Now the next thing is if you observe this diode is having a certain cutting voltage in forward bias. We have seen already, if you are designing the PN junction diode with the help of silicon material, then the forward bias voltage drop offered by the diode is fixed at 0.7 voltage. Suppose if you are designing this diode with the help of germanium, then the cutting voltage will become 0.3 voltage. So here in forward bias, when we are observing this symbol, symbolic representation of the diode we know, it is having two terminals. 
one is anode and another one is cathode one terminal is anode terminal and another one is cathode terminal if i am designing it with the help of silicon semiconductor material then while injecting the voltage from anode to cathode from anode to cathode when the moment you are injecting the voltage this is positive this is negative terminal for diode while injecting the voltage when the moment anode to cathode voltage will become greater than 0.7 voltage then diode will turn on so it will be operated in forward bias similarly anode to cathode voltage for silicon uh, for germanium diode if you are crossing it 0.7 sorry 0.3 then your diode will turn on then it will be operated in forward bias this is the forward bias characteristics so whenever you are discussing about a diode specifically you have to cross check how will you calculate the value of anode to cathode voltage focus on the terminals what is available at the anode terminal the available voltage across the cathode terminal just to subtract them that will give you the value of anode to cathode voltage from this you can explore the value of vak vak for silicon and germanium then cross examine whether the resultant value is greater than 0.7 for silicon greater than 0.3 for germanium 98 percentage in your examination they will use only silicon that is the application in our present day applications people are always giving priority for silicon only so we are not using uh, germanium we know that so questions also mostly framed by using silicon only it is very rare but still you will not remember because we cannot give assurity you can expect the question do remember for silicon and germanium cutting voltages in forward bias they are little bit very important so now we are we have observed that this is the forward and reverse bias characteristics the next most important is current flowing through the diode expression for current flow in the diode how will you express the current that is flowing through the diode sir so let me define the current expression the generalized expression for current that is flowing through the diode id is equal to saturation current that is reverse bias saturation current i will be writing it as reverse saturation current into e power voltage drop across the diode vd upon ideality factor into vt that is thermal voltage minus 1 this is the exact equation of the current that is flowing through the diode now the thing is here vd indicates diode voltage voltage that is dropped across the diode voltage drop across the diode is indicated by vd now while calculating suppose if you are using silicon diode it may be 0.7 for germanium it is 0.3 in some questions this voltage value will be differ so you will have to carefully observe that whether is there anything given in the question or not if nothing is given then by default you can treat the given diode is silicon diode and the value of the cutting voltage will be 0.7 if nothing is given in the question you can take this and the value of thermal voltage it has been fixed that either people will be giving that is also highlighted in the question because we will be using two values one is 25 millivolt and another one is 26 millivolt while solving the problem suppose in the question if it is not given then what should i do sir if it is not given then first take 25 millivolt cross check whether you are uh, getting the answer or not if you are not getting the answer then go with the 26 millivolt definitely out of this to any one voltage only they will be considering it for thermal voltage next term uh, ideality factor this is fixed always this value will be always fixed by default suppose if they are giving if you are going for standard values we can say the value of identity factor will be sure two for silicon and one for germanium the standard values are there but since in the examination usually it will not be mentioned it will not be highlighted it will always be by default it is always be considered as one only if it is given in the question if they are giving some other value like 2 1.5 identity factor value is 1.3 some something if they are mentioning like that then you can take otherwise by default you will have to fix the value is 1 and uh, most of the time we are ignoring the effect of 1 when we are comparing this exponential effect e power vd upon eta times of vt is a little bit far away greater than the value of 1 because of this reason most of the time what we are doing is e power <coughs> exponential of vd by vt into eta approximately so minus 1 is approximately equal to e power vd upon eta times of vt only now from this uh, approximation the diode current is approximated as the diode current is approximated as saturation current reverse saturation current that will be defined in the exam don't worry into e power 
Vd upon theta times of Vt. That is the approximate equivalent value of the diode current. Most important formula because repeatedly questions will be framed by using this formula. You will also remember. You can observe that even in bipolar junction transistor also we will be using this formula in order to explore the current that is flowing through the emitter terminal. So the emitter current we are using the same formula emitter current equal to emitter reverse bias saturation current into e power voltage drop across the base to emitter terminal divided by identity factor eta into thermal voltage. Same formula because there bipolar junction transistor is the developed version of diodes. From diodes only we are fabricating it. So the internal configuration is clearly indicating that there will be a back to back diode in, inside the BJT. It, it can be NPN or PNP transistor, it doesn't matter. So hope we all know this. Now apart from this, there are a few more things that you must know about diode. So when we are observing the diode, the another most question is, you will be requested to calculate the resistance of the diode, internal resistance of the diode. Next question is, you will how to calculate resistance of the diode. How should I calculate the resistance of the diode sir? There are two types of resistors. First let us go back to the static resistors. First you will be requested to calculate the one type of the resistor. Calculate static resistance. First what they will ask is, calculate static resistance. Usually static resist the resistance is the one which will be offered by the diode when it is operated with the DC supply, if the diode is connected with the DC, if the diode is connected with the DC supply, then its corresponding internal resistance will be simply equal to voltage drop across the diode and the current flowing through the diode. From the mathematical derivation of Ohm's law, R equal to voltage drop across the diode divided by current flowing through the diode. That's it. That is the internal resistance offered by the diode. This is called a static resistance. This static resistance name will be different whenever your diode will be connected with the DC supply. So you must remember this. There will be one more uh, resistance that is called a dynamic resistance. Dynamic resistance will be explored when your diode will be connected with the AC supply. So the next one is dynamic resistance. You will be requested to explore dynamic resistance. As I told you, dynamic resistance you can calculate in AC circuit. That is called AC resistance. We can consider it as AC resistance and the previous one is DC resistance because with the help of DC supply we are doing that. Since here your diode from this diode, this is called a dynamic resistance is called AC resistance. Static resistance is called a DC resistance. We now see. Sir, how should I explore the value of uh, dynamic AC resistance? In order to usually the AC resistance will be calculated from the tangent that is the slope will be given in the exam. The value of the slope will be given. Tangent slope. From the graph we are obtaining this. What is this slope sir? As we know resistor is nothing but the ratio between generally R equal to V by I. That is the ratio. It means this slope is nothing but what? Variation in current with respect to voltage is nothing but the slope. But it is that this value we are exploring it in AC. So if the slope value will be directly given, if slope is directly dependent, then just to take the reciprocal for that, that will be giving you the value of dynamic resistor. If instead of slope is given, instead of slope, if they are giving ideality factor, thermal voltage under the diode that is current carried by the diode in forward bias. Current carried by the diode in forward bias in AC current circuit. If it is given, if all these factors will be given, then by considering all this factor, you can calculate the value of diode current, that's it, sorry, diode resistor. So there are two ways to explore the value of AC resistor. One is with the help of identity factor, thermal voltage and forward bias, current carried by the diode in forward bias. Another one is from slope, tangent, directly it will be given in the, this value will be given. You will have to just to take the reciprocal to explore the certain times. <coughs> Next question will be, capacitance of the diode, this is all about resistance. So next they will talk about, you will be requested to calculate the capacitance of the diode. So what are the capacitance are there and how they will ask the question. The first capacitance what they will ask is, you will be requested to calculate the storage capacitance value or diffusion capacitance. 
So storage capacitance or diffuse the capacitance is nothing but when the diode will be followed by us. So we know our diode will be usually operated in two regions. One is forward bias and another one is reverse bias. When your diode will be in forward bias, the correspondent capacitance formation that we are observing from inside the capacitor is sorry, from inside the diode, the capacitance formation. We are observing the properties of the capacitance formation inside the diode when it is operated in the forward bias. That capacitance is usually called, we will be calling it as storage capacitance. As I told, this capacitor, forward bias capacitor is called storage capacitance. What I told is that I told one more thing also. What is that? It is also called diffusion capacitance. I am not giving all in-depth explanations as we are in revision class, but I am giving all required things. Don't worry. So the first one is what? Storage or diffusion capacitance. Storage or diffusion capacitance. How should I explore the value of storage or, di storage or diffusion capacitance? Sir, is there any specific formula? Yes, we have the specific formula to explore the storage capacitor. I will tell you the uh, way to remove this formula, but right now I am giving the formula first. So, lifetime of charge carrier, first thing, into current carried by the diode in forward bias, forward bias, current carried by the diode in forward bias, divided by, in the denominator, as usual, this is going to be ideality factor into thermal voltage Vt. Now here if you are observing, we are observing totally 4 terms. I already told eta is nothing but ideality factor. So here sometimes they will also give, it is this value is also called recombination factor. They will also call it as recombination factor. Sometimes they will tell ideality factor can also be called recombination factor. It is very rare but suppose if they are using that name, don't get confused. If the recombination factor will be given at the exam, then as usual, I told, for silicon it is a 2, for germanium it is 1. They will give only these two values. By default, suppose if it is not given, if nothing is mentioned in the question, then what should I do? So if nothing is mentioned, as I told you, take this value is equal to 1 by default. And the Vt stands for thermal voltage of the diode. Either it is of 26 millivolt or 25 millivolt. It will be highlighted in the question, don't worry. Whatever the value that they are giving, you can consider that value. Now the third one is a tau. Tau is the mean lifetime of minority carriers on either side. Or we can consider it as a time constant. So tau is nothing but basically we are calling it as time constant of the diode or this we will be considering it as time constant of the diode. We can consider it as either time constant of the diode or it, or it is also considered as Lifetime of the minority charge carriers. We can also considering it as the lifetime of minority charge carriers. Lifetime of minority charge carriers. Lifetime of minority charge carriers on either side. Charge carrier on either side. Okay. So don't forget, everything will be given. All you have to do is, first thing what you have to remember is, in forward bias, the formation of the capacitance is called in diode. When a diode is operated in the forward bias, its correspondent capacitor formation is called storage or diffusion capacitance. This itself is a one more question. You should remember, in forward bias, whenever diode is forming a certain capacitance, this formation of the capacitor is called a diffusion capacitance or a storage capacitor. That is the name for this. The another most uh, thing that you must remember is the another most, let us say that this diffusion capacitance, what they will ask me if you are observing that the doping rating under diffusion capacitance are always directly proportional, but it is square root of doping rating. One more question should be framed. The relation between doping and the diffusion capacitance, the doping rating. So the diffusion capacitance is always directly proportional to square root of doping. See, these are all, there will be no any questions from this. But suppose, if they are framing any one more questions, that time we must remember, now. Next, uh, in revision, sorry, in reverse bias, let us see, there is one more type of diode that is called transition capacitance. I am sorry. So, the other capacitor is called transition capacitance. See, when we are discussing about transition capacitance, there is one more name for this. I will tell you. 
transition capacitance. This is called transition capacitance. This transition capacitance, it is having one more name. That is called what sir? In reverse minus anyone knows? That is called space charge capacitor. What is the another name? This is called space charge capacitance. Space charge capacitance. So you must remember that in case of a space charge capacitor, that is a transition capacitance, they will give its internal fabrication properties. Like we know the capacitance formula C is equal to epsilon naught epsilon R A by D. There is one more formula from the manufacturing or internal properties of a dielectric material. We are defining this capacitance formula. Here we know C D is nothing but transition capacitance or space charge capacitance. This is called transition capacitance or space charge capacitance. You know, epsilon is nothing but permittivity. So, relative permittivity will be different in the exam. If it is not given, you know, in air, we will be treating this value as 1. And area will be given. No need to be worried about it. Area will be given. And uh, reverse bias voltage, width also will be defined. Width of this W is nothing but width of the depletion layer, that is D. That is depletion layer width. You can consider, you can keep uh, W also here, that will be the best option. I can read this is width of depression layer, right or like this. Width of depression layer in reverse bias, that will be given. So, with the help of all this parameter, you can directly explore the value of transition capacitance. Hope you will not forget this. Next, uh, what is the relation between reverse bias voltage and the depression layer? The first question. Reverse bias voltage. The reverse bias voltage, the relation between reverse bias voltage and the width of the depletion layer, they are directly proportional. If, we, if the depletion, if the reverse bias, if you are applying more voltage in the reverse bias, what will happen to the width? That will also increase muscle. So they will always have directly proportional relation. And the next one is then if these two people are directly proportional to each other, then what can be the relation between transition capacitance and the reverse bias voltage? Since you are observing reverse bias voltage and the width of the depletion layer are having directly proportional relation between them. And the width, the width of the depletion layer and the transition capacitance are reciprocal to each other. From this I can say transition capacitance is reciprocal to reverse bias voltage. From this what we can define? This is, it can be defined as transition capacitance is going to be, that is reciprocal to reverse bias voltage. Actually in the power of these people will be keeping N. And uh, we are calling it as uh, that, it, that the N value is going to be 1 by 2 or 1 by 3 for step grading and the linear grading of that. That much of things are not required for you. We can skip. Anyway, I am just giving. There are two types of grading. One is called linear grading. And another one is step grading. One is for linear grading. Another one is for step grading. So, in the question... They will mention whether they are using linear grading or step grading. In case of step grader, if it is step grader, then the value of n equal to 1 by 2. For linear grading, it will be 3 by 2. Sir, I don't think that question should be framed from here, but this relation is very important. Reverse bias voltage and transition capacitance are space charge capacitor. Remember, there is one alternative name that is called space charge capacitor. You should not forget this. I am repeatedly saying direct one more question should be framed from this area. So what we observed, in forward bias we are having certain capacitance, in reverse bias also we are having certain capacitance. When we are discussing about forward bias, we will be considering it as diffusion capacitance or storage capacitance. In reverse bias we are calling it as space charge capacitance or transition capacitance. So this is reverse bias and that one is for forward bias. So we have discussed all important and required things of the normal uh, PN junction diode. The another most important one is, Zener diode. You might have uh, seen that Zener diode is the special version or special, it is specially developed for some specific applications. In diode, I know I have not covered uh, some of the applications of diode like uh, clipper, clamper, we can design. So these things are very basics. You can just go through your notes because there are no huge things to observe from this uh, clipper and the clamper uh, circuits at all. But one more thing, what do you have to uh, uh, recollect now? In case of diode, when we are designing, if you are designing a rectifier circuits with the help of diode, you will have to remember certain formulas. 
brackets i will uh, cover uh, when okay let us do one thing we will first complete the rectifier application suppose if we are designing rectifier circuits with the help of diode because clipper clamper that is nothing to discuss you can just study some half an hour if you study the concept you will be understanding but it is very important when they are talking about rectifiers you must know the formulas for all the important terms if you are designing the rectifier circuits with the help of diodes the first most important question in the examination is you will be requested to calculate the ripple factor voltage ripple factor especially they will talk about voltage ripple factor repeated the asked question is voltage ripple factor sir how should i explore the value of voltage ripple factor this voltage ripple factor is nothing but the ratio between rms voltage will be given dc voltage will be given so v rms square minus vd square divided by this is dc vdc square whole power 1 by 2 this is the general formula to obtain the value of voltage ripple factor so v rms is nothing but rms value of ac component hope you all know that and the second question what they will ask is i will tell you since on the output side while exploring the value of voltage ripple factor c now shall i write like this voltage ripple factor can be redefined as in bracket i am writing v rms divided by vdc whole square minus 1 whole power 1 by 2 Can I write this expression like this? Sir? Just to cross examine. Yes, this can be written like this. After that, see, this both values. If you are observing here, I am saying this is RMS value. This factor is nothing but RMS value. This is nothing but DC factor. DC factor is nothing but average value. DC is nothing but average value. Now we know if you are taking the ratio between RMS by average value, that is nothing but what, sir? RMS by average is nothing but form factor. We know. this is nothing but form factor from the basics of circuit theory from this we can redefine the voltage ripple factor can be redefined as if form factor will be given then form factor square minus 1 whole power 1 by 2 that is what we are considering it as voltage ripple factor so if you are knowing the if in the examination if form factor will be directly given then directly you can explore this value next they will also request to request you to calculate the crust factor it's very rare suppose if they are asking you to calculate crust factor peak value it is dependent in terms of peak value if we will request to define the crust factor then take the ratio between maximum value to rms value crust factor is nothing but the ratio between maximum value to rms value these things you must remember now while designing rectifier circuits as we are observing we are designing two type of rectifiers one is half wave rectifier circuits and another one is full wave rectifier circuits now let me define all the cases one by one the first thing if you are defining half wave rectifier circuits one second okay see if you are defining half wave rectifier circuit the first one if you are designing half wave rectifier circuit with the help of diode There are two cases. Case number one. What they will do now in the exam? They will treat your diode as the ideal diode. If you are taking ideal diode, in case of ideal diode, there will be no any cutting voltage. There is no any internal resistance. Nothing is there. Ideal diode means in forward bias it will be short circuit. In reverse bias it will be open circuit. That's it. That is the property of ideal diode. If it is given in the exam that consider the diode is ideal one, then what are all the questions that they will frame in the examination first you will be requested to calculate the v not average value and v not rms value they will frame all the questions one by one now i will tell you the first thing in case of ideal diode the formula v not average v not average value is going to be simply vm by pi that is for v not average second question you will be calculated you will be requested to calculate the i not average If you know the value of maximum value of current, just to take the ratio. The third thing, suppose this I not average can also also be calculated with the help of. Suppose the output load is given, output load resistance value is given. 
If it is given, then what you can do is directly what you can do is after calculating the value of V naught average, just uh, divide it by resistor. That will also give you the value of phi naught average. Since V naught average will be defined as Vm by pi, so Vm by pi into R. That is the alternative formula to explore the value of I naught average when it is given that the diode is the ideal one. Then what about Vm? Vm is nothing but maximum input supply voltage. Maximum input voltage. We can simply call maximum input voltage or peak input voltage. What they will give us in the exam? It will be defined that like input voltage will be defined as V of, equal, v of t equal to Vm into sin omega t. From here you can take the value of Vm. Then directly from there calculate the value of V0 average. So since we are preparing for state government exam. So questions will be, you know, the time period is very less. And they will take very small, small questions. If you remember the direct formulas, that will directly help you to crack the questions. All you have to do is register these things in your mind. That's it. So this is one type of question. Suppose the question is, if it is given that the practical diode, if they are considering practical diode, then how should I explore the value of all this? I will tell you. First, whenever they are talking about practical diode now, directly do one thing. Explore the value of maximum value under maximum value of the current, maximum value of the voltage. I will tell you how to do all these things. So the first one, whenever we are considering about practical diode, once again you will have to explore the value of, let us consider practical diode. The next one is, practical diode will be given. When practical diode will be given, then of course there is no choice. Whenever they are giving practical diode, they will tell that there is some internal resistance for the diode. So diode resistance will be given in the exam. When diode resistance also will be included, given in the exam, then there is no option. You will have to explore that the maximum value of the current, I will tell you. Maximum value of the current that is coming out of the supply, depending on maximum value of the supply voltage divided by the value of the resistance that will be given across the load plus the value of the internal resistance. Suppose if you are giving internal resistance, you will have to consider that plus diode resistor. What is this internal resistance? That will be from supply side, that will be given. If it is not given, then you can assume this value is equal to 0. Once you calculate this now, then from this, so now you know the value of Vmax. From this, calculate the value of, see, this Vmax is from supply voltage. This is from supply voltage. Once you calculate the Imax current from here, now do one thing. Go back, next step. Now explore the value of maximum voltage that will be appeared across the load side. You know the current, the same current will going to flow through all this resistor. Now only focus on load resistor RL. The maximum voltage that will be dropped across the output side or load. In order to explore this, what you have to do? The maximum current into load resistance value RL. Now you know the maximum voltage drop across the load resistor. From this you can explore the value of diode average, V0 average value is going to be. Now you can say that maximum voltage drop across the load divided by pi. This is the correct answer. Now you can explore the value of phi naught average equal to, you know the value of current also. You know the value of current. See that it is here. I am. Now you can directly define. You know the value of Im. If you want to define this value, directly you can define it in terms of Im by pi. Or else you can also, we know the alternative way is V0 average divided by R. V0 average divided by R. We know the value of V0 average that is maximum voltage that will be dropped across the load divided by pi into R. So whenever we are discussing about practical diode, no? it is very important to observe the maximum current that is flowing through the diode circuit. From there, explore the value of current that is flowing into all the parameters. Then calculate the maximum voltage drop across the load side. From there, explore the value of V0 average and then you can explore the value of V0 average. It's a simple process, sir. We can also define this in alternative way. There is one more approach, but I don't want to confuse you all. You just remember this one and only thing that will be enough. Suppose if it is given in the exam. So here we have been completely given. I have been uh, discussing about uh, basics of the diode. Then we were discussed about the applications of the diode. Now I have given half wave rectifier fully. In the next class, we will complete the full wave rectifier and the Zener diode. So uh, probably next class will be the last class for analog electronics. With that, we will wind up the analog electronics. Our next subject, we are going to start electrical measurements. As we have already scheduled 
we are just following the schedule. Next, we are going to start electrical measurements. Okay. This is all for this lecture. The remaining things we will see in the next class. Thank you all.